Good afternoon, magandang hapon, mayong hapon sa inyong tanan. My name is Enzo. I'm breaking protocol, number one, by changing my presentation. And number two, I hit everything that has been said before. So hindi ko na uulitin ang sinabi ng mga kasama natin from F5 Globe and so forth. Um, what I'm trying to do here is I am sharing with you my practice, which is business development. And by that I mean, I take a good look at the market, market behavior, take, take some market insights. I take a good look at the landscape, both competitors, partners, and see what solutions are out there. And then I try to benchmark versus the best possible use case, in this case of digital government. Thereafter, hopefully we can have questions and conversation. At may kita natin, ano ba yung daang matuwid? Papunta sa digital government. So, if you can beg your indulgence, I will dive right in. Increasingly, more and more, we hear the words digital, digital world, digital native, digital government. Dati ang buzzword natin to ay cloud. Kung ka cloud ka, muso ka, cool ka. But look at it today, people are throwing terms around like big data, M2M, and IoT. So you'll notice the terms are changing, but what it all adds up to is a digital world, a digital experience. Um, it's not a stretch to say, nagbago na po ang mundo. Eh. Based on last estimate, and if there are any statisticians in the room, you will correct my record, there were about 40 million online Pinoys. <laughs> this number will double, triple in, in short order. But this is the new normal. Everyone is connected somehow, some way. And without hyping PLDT or global, people connect. Man, woman, old, young, child, adult, professional, private, public. Everyone connects. But if you were to go beyond our shores, this is happening worldwide. We are not different. If, if you look at the bigger map as a whole, there are 3 billion online users. People who are tweeting, complaining, sharing, buying, voting in some areas. And this is the new reality. Which is why as a citizen, taking away my badge, taking away the fact that I will be able to uh, it's my pleasure to be a part of this. Kasi nakikita ko, maganda na nangyayari yan. Maganda na ang timing natin. Now, if we are living in a digital world, so I will use a new buzzword natin kasi pa cloud, cloud motion. If we are living in a digital world, siguro, and um, with your intelligence, we should start to define what digital really means. There's so many things happening. Internet, videos, backup, grass. Uh, ako mismo na nang speed ko. So I would like to volunteer a rather straightforward definition of what it means to be in a digital world. Therefore, what it means to have a digital government. So digital is a set of technology which connects people to machines and information in real time. However way it is done, that's what makes it digital. Ang catchphrase po dyan is in real time. Dati naman kasi pwede naman mag-connect ng tao sa tao, hindi lang ang in real time. Dati naman pwede mag-connect ang isang aparato sa isang tao, also not in real time. We could always have access to information with a bit of life, but today this is the difference. Everything happens in real time. May prediction ngayon, mamaya na tweet na yun. We don't have to wait for the press release to talk about the MISP 2015, hindi po ba? Now, key to unraveling what it means to be digital is understanding the technologies to support this. And this is why I'm here to talk about cloud. But hindi po siya cloud strategy, ladies and gentlemen. Digital is beyond cloud. Cloud is a part of it, yes, but digital is more than cloud. It has the following components. A digital world, therefore a digital strategy, therefore a digital government should be social, mobile. It should have some sort of analytics. Um, my colleague is in the next room talking about big data. And then cloud, of course, is there. But notice, ang ulitin ko yan, hindi lang siya cloud strategy. Hindi po porke naka-cloud tayo. We have, we have email and so forth, we are digital. It's not the case. To be truly, through and through digital, involves social, mobile, analytics, and cloud. Sometimes we call this the smack stack, or the TAMS, if you rearrange. There's actually a fifth integral part, which I will not talk about, which is a second S, SMACs. The second S is security. But we'll get to that uh, perhaps next year. Now, what am I looking at when I see social media for government? Um, it's a must for any organization, private, PLDT, but what more for a public organization? 
your constituents are increasingly reaching out to you through digital channels. That is siguro, right? 10 years ago or so, if you want to reach out to your congressman, you would write a letter. Possibly, uh, it will get published in the Philippine Star, or possibly his undersecretary will read it and give feedback. But today, if you have a complaint, or if you have something nice to say, you tweet it. And if you are lucky, and if this um, individual is also tech savvy, they will tweet back. That's the interaction today. Interestingly, Pinoy's, on average, spend 4 hours and 15 minutes online, some way, somehow. A portion of that can be, or should be used, to interact with local government. Vox Populi, Voice of the People. It's digital. It should be there. Uh, Rapper did a Rapper did a bit of a survey not too long ago. Not surprisingly, discussing politics is the least use of social media. Pulaan yung ano ang pinakasikat na use of social media. Shout it out, anyone? To do what? Ano ang pinag-uusapan sa Facebook? Bora! She's Miss. So, She's Miss is the first point. She's Miss, Showbiz, Entertainment. Um, is highest, religion is in the middle, and politics, whether tweeting directly to a member of Congress, your concejal, or talking about a topic such as race school, that's the least used. And it's a shame because we spend so much time on the internet. Why is Now, these are 40 million eyeballs spending 4 hours and 15 minutes. And from a strategy standpoint, what are we doing with that? It's a question I can't ask. Because the truth is, um, with every like, tweet, share, etc., etc., these, these are how our constituents, who are increasingly younger, this is how they interact with government. I don't, I don't think school children now will write letters, but if we don't get ahead of this, I uh, even Now, if I move on to mobile, another statistic, which is uh, thanks to the combination of Globe and PLDT, who sell so much. There are more cell phones in the country than there are citizens. Last five minutes, I'll make it very, very fast. Okay, what does that mean? It's gotten to the point that people have to stay connected and they have to have their phones. Point of fact, and this happens to me, it happens to you. If you go to work and you leave your phone and your wallet, sorry, I'll face that. If you go to work and you don't have your wallet, will you go back home and get it? Probably not. But I guarantee you, if you go to work and you don't have your phone, I will bet you my bottom dollar you will go back and get your phone. Why? Fear of missing out. Oxford actually added this to the word. If you're not connected, you don't miss out. Now what this is, is it allows us instant access, better communication, even collaboration. And again, I beg the question, what is the mobile strategy toward a digital government? I'm going very, very fast. Analytics, I will not belabor the point. There is a longer breakout in the next two. Short of saying, Analytics is letting you know what you should know, but you don't know today. For example, I just found out there is something called selfie analytics. There's, there's 60 million selfies a day generated. There is a research firm who does analytics based on face, happy ba siya or sad. Clothing, anong brand ng suot niya. Location, nasa mall ba siya, simbahan, etc. Et or brand ng product na hawak niya. Now, interestingly, and this is something which I would like to see, what if we had a selfie analytics engine for selfies taken after renewing your driver's license in LPU? It's a funny thought, but listen, this is how it is today. You will not get feedback forms, people will not check a list, they will react instantaneously. And it's a way for us to communicate. Which brings me to cloud. Okay, this is, this is an old statistic, cloud use increasing, etc, etc. My colleagues said this much better than I did. But finally, how cloud adds up to this digital strategy is that it allows us an infrastructure which will change quickly. Sinabi na kasamahan natin about Project NOAA. Pag umuulan, traffic na, hindi ka makapasok sa website. It allows you to be more agile. My colleagues from Globe are saying that Globe makes you uh, sorry, Google makes you quicker. You don't have to be tied down to your books and your desk anymore. But most importantly, it makes you flexible. And this is a point I will get back to toward the end. Now, smack, smacks. Pulang ng security. Hindi ko na papasukan. Maybe next year, F5 can have one entire breakout on security. But it's an issue of transformation. How do you use all these technologies, not just globe? 
not just F5, not just PLDT, etc., to transform. How do you put together social, mobile, analytics, cloud, and security transform? I don't have the answer. Here is a use case which is very interesting to me. Show of hands, who knows where Estonia is? San po yung Estonia, sir? Somewhere in Eastern Europe, correct? It's been annexed by USSR several times. It's a small country. The population is 1.3 million people. They have by far the most advanced digital government in place. The US is following them. The UK is following them. And let me show you why. Remember, SNAP, Social Media Analytics Cloud. By the way, hindi ako tatas ng bambu ko. Hindi ko sinasabi may nang nag-feel na dito. You know what? It's worth copying. Estonia did two things. They have a population database. This is their national register of 1.3 million citizens. This has your name, your birthday, your address or addresses, kung palimatito ka ng bahay, and your citizenship. Okay. Mind you, this applies to Estonians who are not in Estonia. Second, each citizen has an identity card. It is microchip based. It has your identity. But it also has your authority. E-signatures. This is all linked by a system. I will get there to uh, the next slide. But to our first two presenters who showed a glimmer of it, ang ginawa ni Estonia, tinali nila lahat. What does this do? For business, you can transact using your e-signature. In fact, it is a law that no government should ask for a paper signature. Your card will suffice. To date, 140,000 legally binding signatures have been used. In elections, in the past parliamentary election, this year, 2015, give or take 24%, 25% of the voting public voted using their ID card. 170,000 votes. Health, because this is such a comprehensive system, you as a citizen can choose to elect a specialist or a general practitioner to know your conditions. For example, everyone can know your blood type, but not everyone knows that you have had a history of hepatitis or dementia. And best of all, taxation. There is a flat 21% tax rate in Estonia. Every year, all you have to do is nothing. In two days, your rebate goes back, digitally of course, to your bank. The applications move on and on. There's only one ID, no more license, uh, no, no more separate passport, no more fill health card, no more pag card, all on one card. Interestingly, because they also have a high mobile adoption rate, they do it now on the phones. Your phone has a specific card as well embedded with the SIM. Now, indulge me in a bit of no sleep. So for everyone who is an engineer or who likes to dabble, um, this is what that looks like, that digital strategy. Waiting ko ha, pag digital, smack. Social, mobile, analytics, cloud, security and smacks. Taking away the social part, notice how the EID, which is now on the phone, is a mobile strategy. Any citizen who has that mobile phone is a citizen through and through able to access several hundred government services. In terms of analytics, everything from your population to your health, to your their version of LTO, um, the utilities also play in because it's a PPP. Energy use, telco use, financials, all on one engine, separate but easily integratable. And finally, it's quite simply, cloud because it is actually all hosted on the cloud. They were once hacked some years ago, and most people will ask that question, so let me jump right in. They were able to, yes, they went down for about a couple of days, but they were able to reboot, recover, similar to what my colleagues mentioned, because specifically they were in the cloud, so very resilient system. Now, all for a price tag based on the last estimates of $67 million. Granted, that applies to 1.3 million people, so the per capita cost. Uh, it's not exactly cheap. But what's very, very interesting here is the reason why it works so well as a digital government strategy is because it is not a cloud government strategy. It is not an analytics government strategy. It is not a Facebook government strategy. 
it is a smacks. I, I'm not talking about the security side, but uh, trust me, it's there. Now, my, my time is over, but suffice it to say, this is where we want to go. Uh, BLDT has been called boastful and my many times before, but I come from a place of humility when I say to our partners in the public sector, this is where we want to go. I'm not saying I can do this for you today. I'm not saying that this is available for a price tag of 60 million pesos. But looking at our strategic direction, our investments in social, our investments in mobile, our investments in cloud, and our investments in analytics, this is where we want to take our partners, both private and public. Okay? Together, we will become digital. That's it for me. Maraming salamat my name. Tutok na, nawan sa Pilipinas Ibuti ng mundo, kainin ang gusto Alamin ng tamang daan kung paano ako maseso Kasama ang buong troma ng wan sa Pilipinas Aming ibibigay sa madla at ipamadanas Ang saya ng wan sa Pilipinas Tutok na, sa wan sa Pilipinas Ang saya dito sa Pilipinas Ihahatid sa inyo ng wan sa Pilipinas